Hey guys. Here we are. Back on Wind Chaser, except um, we're doing a little bit of tillage now. I uh, traded in our 870 Colo Tigers for the 2720, and uh, 450 horses is pulling it uh, fairly well. Um, went ahead and added a uh, interior light here, as well as our working front and rear uh, working lights. So. Uh, we're just uh, pretty much just disking in and ripping in all of this uh, withered corn here. Uh, finished up spraying all of our fields, which is great. Uh, it took us uh, two sprayers, really two, two full nights to get it done. Um, well, like more like two and a half, really. But um, we had probably like another like three days of tillage. Um, we'll have to do, you can see the lights in the background there and the church and everything and Conagra, so. Um, it's the Beat Facilities lights right there on the piler. Um, cab illuminates really well. I really like how uh, you can see what I'm doing. Then, of course, um, you have the shop lights you can see. We have the shed doors open over there. But we're just uh, letting our GPS do the work for us because we can't really see shit. Um, yeah, I, was, I wasn't I was sure if like 450 horses would be able to pull this 27 and a half foot uh, 11 shank ripper, but on the spec sheet it's rated at 35 to 55 horse horsepower per shank, so we're right around the, um, uh, uh, we're 40 horse, so we're 5 horsepower above the minimum requirement. I'm assuming we'd be doing more, more disking. We won't be running the shanks as deep in this situation. We'd it'd be more of a disk with a light rip, but. Either way, it's working um, pretty well. I mean, Raphael did such a great job on his Ripper that I kind of feel bad for getting rid of it and switching to mine. But I've, I've used mine for you know so many hours that I think it's ready for me to either build a new deer deer disc Ripper or maybe like a Coon Kraus. But um, we all really like the uh, working width of this. It's uh, 27 and a half foot. It's like 8.5 meter working width. So we're all really happy with the working width. Uh, makes a long um, tillage season a little bit shorter. For so long that it's kind of. If I were to uh, build the 2730, it's a lot heavier, uh, a lot more aggressive, and it's a foot shorter, but. Um, this, this should actually be around like close to nine, I think. So, uh, field 3 and 18, this is field 18, we uh, plowed up field 3, these are the two, uh, we sold 16 and we bought up these two fields closer to our farm and paid off some debt so we had a little bit more line of credit, because we pretty much depleted our entire line of credit. Um, and we also rented uh, additional fields, uh, I, did, I did the math, it's around 10000 a day it's costing us to lease all of this additional land um, but it's you know it's like uh, I don't know probably 
five million dollars worth of land we're leasing. So um, throughout this harvest, this season, it's going to be around 20, 25 days, maybe 20 days. I forget. I think it's probably like 20 days. Well, we own it through tillage, so it's like 20 days of growth, and then we have like five days of tillage and like spring that we had to update uh, to the next growth cycle for it to update. Um, although we probably could uh, plant, um, run the cultivators over this, but I don't know if we'll have enough time. Um, so, yep, yeah, 10000 a day, pretty much 20 days, so you're looking at whatever that comes out to, 250000 to to lease all of our land, which is not bad, because we're probably going to come out probably close to $2 million in, in crops. Well, it really depends on what we plant. We still have all of our silos full of this crop coming in, and I know we're going to be having some corn and soybean and canola grade demands coming up in the next couple weeks, so we'll be able to unload that and uh, at least pay off some debt, if not uh, purchase purchase some new equipment or at least uh, you know save up some funds for when our leases are up. So at this point all we can really do is just till and then we'll worry about everything else later. Um, we really can't afford to pay for the land based like on the money we have right now but we're pretty much banking on having a great demand come up you know, within the next week. Otherwise, we'll really be hurting on um, funds. We're pretty much completely leveraged. Uh, we're pretty much uh, leveraged our money as best we could um, to pretty much maximize how much we can get out of it. So uh, we're going really heavy on uh, uh, soil mod on our first. Uh, Every time we acquire these fields, these fields essentially have no nutrients in them at all. The only thing they have now after a full season of, you know, it's day like 37 or something like that, after, you know, so many days of, of rain that they actually have a little bit of moisture in them. You know, obviously all of, all of our other fields, you know, they're probably close to 70 to 80 percent moisture just because we've been spraying them, you know, and, you know, and dry. They have, it's not that we've been gaining, it we've just been minimizing our losses of moisture, so, uh, but that costs money, but at the same time, um, it definitely, definitely shows during harvest, you know, the difference between 40 and 70 percent moisture is, you know, significant. So, some of our fields we're probably going to have to broadcast some lime because um, right now they're at 6.2 we just put down an additional thing of NPK and plus we till you know all of our tillage so we're probably going to be around pH of 6 so uh, we're going to have to broadcast some limestone and uh, get those get that soil pH up up to neutral if not a little bit uh, more than neutral so as we we're probably going to spray all these fields again probably three more times uh, probably with herbicide and you know additional nutrients as needed so Right now it's uh, actually fun to plow in the dark now with all the lights, um, sun setting, you know it's probably right around 10 o'clock in game right now. So. 
was nice. Mike, me and Mike kind of just hammered out the rest of the fields out with the sprayers. So. And then I brought those 870s back to the dealer and traded in for a pair of 2720s. Just because, you know, we, we were pretty much farming a third, if not just a little bit under a third of the map right now. Um, so we really need that extra uh, uh, working with on our primary tillage. Otherwise, it would take forever, you know. We're, it would probably take, you know, what is our working with here? It's you know, 17 meters we're covering with two of these in the field versus um, 11. You know, so we're pretty much 30%. Well, technically 50%. By switching to these, we pretty much uh, added, you know, 50% uh, or reduced our tillage time by 50%. So. I was thinking also putting um, the seat textures of this in, as well as this floor mat on my Cat Challenger. Uh, basically, burning uh, this UV into another, you know, two UVs together. Now that I know how to do that fairly well, so I think I'm going to start doing that. I don't know how Giants does it originally, but I know that I could pretty much UV map an object around an existing UV um, map and burn it into a new one. So that I know how to do, but how Giants originally does it is uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure because when I do it, it's not pixelated and, and their images are pixelated. So I'm not really familiar with how they do it. But it's definitely one way to make detail without actually modeling the detail. Um, you could just UV wrap, like see the seat, it's just a simple you know, it's, there's one big face there, then another face, but, you know, on that center piece, it actually looks like it's three cushions, but that's one face, you know, so you don't, you can reduce your amount of polygons in your model by using detailed images to UV wrap around, so, um, not like it really matters with the way the engine is now, high poly mods, you know, really doesn't matter at all. The only thing that really affects your gameplay is the size of your DDS files, because that's all about RAM and memory usage on your GPU, so, um, I mean, if, yeah, if you were to put, like, a couple, you know, like, a, a billion polygons in one area and looked at them, it would, like, your frames per second and stuff like that, but, 
you know, normal gameplay. Like, I have, you know, some pretty high poly mods that I play with, and, you know, even Mike on his laptop. But he plays on this map now in high settings, and it's, you know, there's no lag at all, so. Maybe on, like, the older versions, maybe, like, an old Giants engine they were using, maybe uh, high poly mods affected your gameplay. I know on, like, 13 that it did, but I think it's mostly, um, the the scripting if you use a uh, write LUA files basically how it's scripted is it running your CPU all the time is it not running you know it really depends on what it's calling back on so there's a lot of things but the model itself really doesn't affect gameplay at all um, but what does affect it is the amount of the size of your DDS files so the difference between like a a 4096 versus a, a 1024, you know, image size image will really um, affect the amount of frames per second and as well as just overall performance in game. So um, that's something that I've learned that I've noticed. I noticed if I drop the resolution. Like, you can burn and really, really, on a big image, like, I typically burn all of my uh, maps at 4096, and then I'll shrink it down after I make all of my spec maps and normal maps, just so, you know, when I initially am modeling the, you know, it's probably like 100 MB, you know, file size, but once I'm done uh, with the burning of the primary images, I'll go ahead and shrink it down, and all of a sudden that's back down to like 32 or something like that or 20 or you know whatever it ends up being so but the the thing is like like I mean this joystick is really nice the monitor is nice clean and crisp but if you look at the you know everything else it's like extremely just extremely pixelated and just low low high low like low definition which is kind of a turn off really you know I think the quality and textures was much better in 13 uh, than it is in 15 so everything just appears to be more fuzzy or uh, I guess less uh, sharp less defined it's like it was all kind of like burnt at a low resolution, so I'm not sure why, but 13 definitely had better uh, details. Um, if you look at like the titanium mod in the um, the case equipment in 13 compared to the case equipment in 15, it's night and day difference in the, uh, uh, texture quality. So. I'm not sure why they changed it, but they did. Um, not for the better, unfortunately. Like a, a lot of the things. Although the one of the most significant things that I'm actually thankful for is how they changed the lighting and how it impacts your gameplay. Like I could add shadows to my lights. I can have all the lights, you know, at a thousand clip distance, you know, and it doesn't lag my game. Like in 13, I, I remember I was doing edits to maps, and once the lights came on, it just like bogged the entire game down, which was stupid. Because I mean, like the more like see even the lights on my train, you don't even notice them. It doesn't affect the game at all, and that's kind of silly. Because that's like one of the greatest things about agriculture in the 
design of the equipment is the illumination package. I mean, so much thought and detail goes into the lighting packages on a lot of this equipment because, you know, like, you just can't harvest when it's, <laughs> when the sun is out. Like, you need to be, you, you know, I've, uh, people are out one, two o'clock in the morning and they're starting at four. So lighting package is critical. Yeah, that really, that whole element of uh, farming uh, or playing during nighttime or early morning was really, you know, you really couldn't do it at all because the game wouldn't allow you. Even with really, you know, high-end equipment, dedicated GPUs, I don't know what they did, but whatever they did, I'm really glad they did it. Um, and I wish they would make further improvements like that uh, because that was really uh, a, a really good um, what I would say is a game changer and the fact that they pretty much implemented Durrell's um, I don't know if they purchased it from or they gave him royalties but they definitely incorporated aspects of the MR engine that he designed uh, because the way that a lot of the things like you're turning, you're raising lower, you're the mass calculation it's identical to the way it was with the MR engine so I'm glad whatever they did or the, the agreement that was reached I'm glad it was I think they could build upon that um, um, I wish they would bring back the, the car spine where you you know where they weren't impenetrable tanks That. I wish they would bring back the milk truck. That was great. I enjoyed that. That was always fun. Um, now it just magically disappears. I think they need to... Um, look at, you know, it's something that I would think was relatively small and wouldn't require a lot of uh, manpower, energy, money, time. But if they would fix the economy in the game where they, I mean, they already have missions. I haven't really played any at all. In 15, I did a little bit in uh, in 13, like mowing missions to make money and stuff like that. Pretend that you're like a landscape mowing company or whatever, and then some of the transport missions, whatever. It was quick, easy money. Um, but I think what they should really do is look into the idea of um, good seasons, bad seasons, and like contracting. Um, you can like agree to contract your grain at X price and then like there was natural disasters I remember when I first started playing like farm sim games it was like I believe it was uh, sim farm and it was just a old old shitty game by like Max you know the people that made you know sim cities and, and the sims and stuff like that but it was really fun and like, I mean, there was no like simulation. It was just kind of like you look at a screen. It's kind of like how, oh no, you can still kind of like move those around, kind of. Um, like John Deere Farmer or whatever that game is. But it was before that and you could like grow corn and strawberries and stuff like that. And you had to spray for pesticide or like, and then like tornadoes would come in. And, I don't know, but the, the thing is, like, this game lacks, like, pests, it lacks fungus, it lacks, uh, you know, rotting crops, it lacks uh, droughts, it lacks floods, it, you know, it has some hail, but it doesn't really affect the crop at all. Decker actually implemented some of that in with his soil management, but um, although it's great and it actually makes it, there's a purpose to tillage equipment now, and there's a purpose to, um, 
you know, managing soil pH and stuff like that, it's still not really that realistic to farming. I mean, you know, you can't visually see like fungus on the plants. You can't see anything like that, but you know, that would be really great. But I feel like they're, they're focused on getting the game on so many different uh, mediums now, like portable game consoles and like gaming consoles and stuff like that, that they're not really focused on getting you back to a true a true simulation experience whereas this I've seen a few videos and like screenshots of this it's like cattles and crops or something like that it's a, this new game and I think this is really interesting because as of now farm sim as it is is competing with itself um uh, which is never a good situation for the consumer. As you can see, a lot of us are pretty angry, upset, uh, blah, blah, blah. But this new, um, this upcoming um, company or game or whatever um, is giving the consumer an alternative choice. And based on his narrative in one of the videos, he pretty much addressed all the issues that I have seen come up with um, farm sim and that have, have not been addressed over the years. So this game is, you know, this other company is actually taking you know, the opportunity to address these and, you know, capitalize and, you know, bring the consumer really what the, the consumer and gamer wants in their simulation game. So it'll be interesting. Um, it looks really well, like really, really, um, um, like almost kind of like a Skyrim appearance to it, I would want to say. They're definitely using some kind of a, um, a new engine, rendering engine, um, where everything kind of like changes on its own. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's kind of like Skyrim where... Um, it kind of just renders random stuff, you know, over and over and over as you, as you progress in the map. And, um, the rain, the water, it all looks very real. Um, but at the same time, like, that's, that's great, but you need to have the physics along with it. You need to have the tractor accelerate, brake, handle, the workload, the engine. Um, you know, that all has to be in, in sync with the kind of terrain you're working with and like going up hills and going down hills. Like, um, you know, in this game, your engine RPM doesn't really fluctuate if you're going up or downhill that much. Um, even under load. But it does, as compared to in 13 when it didn't. So going back to that more realistic engine incorporation is there's a little bit you can sense it you can feel it you can you know see it in the your, your speed um, but I think having a competing game um, of high caliber quality I think that will be a, a I think that's good for both companies and I think that's good for the consumer and gamer just because I think the companies will be pushed um, to kind of like get off, you know, get off their chairs and actually start to innovate once again, and you know, try to be the at the forefront and try to retain or capture new market share. Because they're already trying to capture market share from other games such as like you know World of Warcraft and. You know, Grand Theft Auto and stuff like that, because a lot of the people kind of have they kind of stick to their own games. Like me, I pretty much just play this game, and um, I don't really play anything else. I used to play, you know, but I'm pretty much dedicated to one game, um, and it's usually always some form of a simulation um, game like that. So, like the target audience usually sticks to that kind of genre in type of game so 
it's almost like there's a fixed there's a, f a fixed amount of gamers you can capture. So um, they're all going to be fighting over that same same amount because I don't think there's very many people that would like jump ship or like um, you know people that aren't already playing FS that would start playing FS um, unless they're you know familiar with agriculture like that because I don't really see it appealing to anyone that doesn't enjoy engineering or agriculture um, and, and, and like those that the whole like the great thing about this game that sep separates it from others is the ability to, to, to mod the ability to model something texture it, script it, and then play with it. That's very appealing, you know, and, you know, there's a lot of people that are on console, and they don't have that ability, and they probably never will have that ability, so, um, the kind of target audience they're going for is completely different as compared to the audience that is actually, like, uh, on a computer base, so... It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I guess the release of this new this new uh, competing company in game is in 2016. So it will definitely be interesting to see the changes because FS17 would come out a year after that. So it would give them a year to really kind of um, go back to the drawing board if necessary and make changes or or add things. And, so I definitely think the next version of Farm Sim, if this other game comes out, I think it will be um, much, much improved. Um, I think FS15 when it first came out, um, I wasn't really that happy. I mean, it was a lot better than the base 13 game, but it wasn't much, if, if, if at all, better than FS15 with the MR engine and soil mod. So, um, it was pretty tough to actually commit to 15 until a lot of these other mods started coming out, like Upside Down, he was pretty much the trailblazer at scripting, like, this drive control and multi-fruit and additional, uh, uh, fruit type, stuff like that. So, without those guys, and like Decker, without those guys, this game would be completely garbage and I'd still be playing 13. Like I think other people are, but the the fact that the the scripts are here and they work great and GPS works great. I mean, you know, I think the, the game, uh, just the whole the fact that you know, like going back to the night, the lights and everything, and, and a lot of the scripts that were being used in thirteen are pretty much standard. I'm actually really interested to see, like, what is it, a year, two years from now? I don't know when FS17 comes out. I'm assuming it'll probably be, like, well, 15 came out. Yeah, so it would come out probably December of 17? I don't know. I'm assuming we have a good year at least to go, a year and a half year and two months, whatever it is. Um, but it should be interesting to see what kind of changes. I... I really hope that they kind of direct their attention to the American market a little bit more. Um... Like, I get Europe, like, this is completely, uh, if you look at all the websites out there, there's very few American, you know, modding sites. It's usually all kind of like a Russian, you know, I'm just talking about, like, the, the percentage of sites that, like, actually, like, upload or re-upload mods and stuff like that. 
you know, like, Mod Hoster, FSUK, all the other, like, no-name shitty sites. You know, they're all, like, some kind of European, Russian, uh, you know, stuff like that. There's, <laughs> there's, like, maybe one or two for every, like, 15 or 20 uh, American to, you know, Europe or, or such like that, so. That's a big dip. It's getting pretty dark out now. Nutrients in this field when we first started was uh, zero, 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 with a little bit of moisture in it, so. Six, three. So yeah, we're already sitting pretty decent. So here's our rig that we're running. Um, uh, T9450 with ATI track system. Um, 2720. Wheel's still spinning. to the shop I think I'm just going to plant grass and uh, field 3 just be done with it are still on there. And here we just have one of our sprayers. That's where I parked last. So. Here's our other T9 row crop.
So our John Deere 2720s are a little, a little dirty, but so here's a six and three here. But I think I'm just gonna plant grass here and call it a day and bale it for for hay and sell it. So those guys are Shut doors. The next thing they need to work on for the lights is so the lights don't conflict with one another. Um, then our shop back here. I could probably park a baler, a merger, uh, at least some stuff in the middle here between trailers. Definitely park like mowers back here, baler and merger. So I'll probably stick all my hay equipment back here when I buy it. And we could probably park like a uh, third trailer in here if we need it. And then uh, we'll probably buy a DB planter and second combine. Can park the planter in here. Can park. Probably gonna trade in the Kinsey cart for 1500. Or if we have enough help, we can get. Gee, I'd rather just have the 1500. Sprayer should be in the other shop. Everything's all locked up. Green facilities. pasture I took the door off this one so this is another little grain complex works pretty good I have a power wash over here for some reason, but I mean, I guess if you're over. Close these doors. So this is where the other sprayer should be. I have the T8 over here, mowers. Um, could probably stick a, uh, Thinking a DN, a, we don't really need to buy one, we can just rent.
So, how far can we see? We can't see anything really. We see some trees. Signs lit up. Anyway, it's nighttime, so thanks for watching.